What if we told you that seaweed, a form of algae, can be farmed just like weed or cabbage? What if we told you that there is a trailblazing aquaculture facility in Down East Maine that is doing just that? What if we then told you that it is almost entirely run by just one individual, Sarah Redmond? This is the incredible story of Springtide Seaweed, the largest organic seaweed aquaculture facility in North America. Hi, I'm Brianna Marshall, and this is Aquadocs. Springtide Seaweed is a company that understands what the majority of the world is missing out on, the nutritional benefits of seaweed. Having been around for 10 years, the company, founded by Sarah, has worked hard to bring seaweed products to dining tables across the country. Their goal is to make seaweed a staple in the diets of people around the world. Springtide Seaweed also provides resources to other hobby and commercial farmers so more people can join the seaweed movement. The hatchery, greenhouse, and farms that make up Sarah's operation are located in Goldsboro, Maine. Two farms totaling 55 acres are located in the bay, where Maine's cold, clean waters offer the perfect opportunity for Sarah to grow a variety of seaweeds, from sugar kelp and dulse to Alaria and skinny kelp. But why choose seaweed? Why not something that's been done before, like oysters or fish? We'll let Sarah explain that one. When I was in high school, I decided I wanted to be a seaweed farmer. So I just combined the two things I really liked, which was gardening and the ocean. It was a sort of a long road to get here, but uh, I ended up going to school for aquaculture in Maine. And at the time learned a lot about salmon farming and um, shellfish farming, but really there was nobody doing any seaweed work. And I just felt like I just wasted so much time and then I didn't know what I was going to do when I got out, and I just got these horrible jobs on fishing boats, and it was just horrible. I was like, what am I going to do with my life? Um, and then all these things started to happen, so it was very much like fate started to step in and was like, no, you are going to be a seaweed farmer because that's your purpose, and then um, just ended up all these, all these incredible sort of opportunities started to come my way, and just worked really hard ever since. Sarah is now the owner and only one of two employees operating Springtide Seaweed, with Sarah performing all the day-to-day tasks by herself. Her love for these poorly understood algae has led her to become a leader in organic and sustainable seaweed aquaculture, providing education, resources, and seed to both hobby and commercial farmers. Not only that, but Sarah contributes to the scientific community through her continued cultivation of what was once thought to be a morphotype of sugar kelp, but was later elevated to species level. Sarah is actively paving the way for seaweed aquaculture and has developed the very first organic certification program for seaweed crops. Her knowledge and experience has also helped her obtain a grant to continue her work further developing techniques for the cultivation of dulse in the North Atlantic. We've discussed a lot about what Sarah and Springtide Seaweed do, but what about the product? What exactly is seaweed and why is it apparently so good for us? Seaweeds come from three different algal groups. Red, such as dulse, green, such as sea lettuce, and brown, which is the group that kelps belong to. They range in size from just a few millimeters to over 50 meters in length. When choosing which species to farm, farmers like Sarah consider the nutrient value of various species, as well as the skills required to grow each one. The habitats these algae create range from shrub-like ecosystems to giant kelp forests, creating habitats and nurseries for thousands of marine species in oceans across the globe. Aside from offering beautiful and important ecosystems, why are people so passionate about seaweed? Well, for one thing, it's easy to grow. Water parameters don't need to be controlled in the open ocean, and seaweeds make their own food by using sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water. Seaweeds are also incredibly sustainable and can be grown without the use of fertilizers or other potentially environmentally harmful chemicals. Seaweed also acts as a filter, cleaning the water in the surrounding ecosystem. All of this has contributed to seaweed aquaculture becoming one of the world's fastest growing aquaculture sectors. If that wasn't enough, seaweed also comes in a variety of flavors, allowing for many different uses, from dishes such as sushi and soups to add-ons such as seasonings or pickles. 
Sarah and her company are not just passionate about seaweed as a culinary delight, however, but they truly believe that seaweed can be added to everyone's diet as both a healthy substitute to salt and a way to consistently get all the incredible nutrients that seaweed offers. The farm seaweed that we have is kind of salty and you're tasting mostly the potassium, which tastes saltier than sodium. And so if you look at the Western diet and the Western health issues, it tends to be around an imbalance of sodium. So if you can include seaweed and, and replace it with your table salt, it's, it's a really interesting opportunity because a lot of older people uh, have been told to cut down on the table salt. And so what you're seeing is people are just like cutting salt out completely and then they're imbalanced in the other way. Seaweed can provide sort of the flavor that you crave when you need salt, but it also provides the balance of minerals. Clearly seaweed has a multitude of incredible uses, but how does it get from the ocean to your dinner table? Actually, it's not as complicated as you may think. We'll start with the macroscopic stage of the seaweed, the sporophyte, and the most well-known stage of the seaweed life cycle. The large blades of the seaweed or mature sporophyte are home to the sorus, the reproductive tissue of the algae. This tissue produces male and female zoospores. In the wild, these microscopic zoospores are released directly into the water column. For the purpose of cultivation, however, the sorus is removed from the seaweed in the summer months before the zoospores can be released. This tissue is then cleaned off and wrapped in a paper towel to be left overnight. The next day, the tissue is placed in clean seawater, stimulating the release of the zoospores. Once released, the flagellated zoospores swim around, looking for an ideal place to settle. In the cultivation process, this spore or seed solution is poured over seed string, a small string wrapped around a pipe, giving the spores a place to settle. Once settled, the zoospores then grow into microscopic male or female gametophytes. The gametophytes are now ready to undergo fertilization. The female gametophyte releases a pheromone that stimulates the male gametophyte to release its motile sperm. The egg is then fertilized, creating a zygote. The zygote then develops into a new juvenile sporophyte on the seed string. The sporophytes are then grown in the hatchery for a few weeks until they reach a few millimeters in size. During this time, they are tended to by changing the water weekly, ensuring no unwanted algae or animals get into the tanks. Because Sarah's operation is USDA certified organic, no fertilizer is used during this stage, so the growth of little seaweeds is entirely natural. Once the sporophytes reach the proper size, they are transplanted to the farm in the fall. In order to do this, a polypropylene rope is passed through the pipe that the seed string is wrapped around. One end of the seed string is tied to the rope, and as the boat moves, the seed string begins to wrap itself around the rope. The seaweed is then left to grow out on these long lines over winter. Sarah checks the farm frequently during this time in order to ensure no ropes are tangled and that the seaweeds are in the proper place in the water column. Once the seaweed has reached its harvesting size, Sarah uses her skiff to go out to the long lines every day and remove the seaweed. This process can take several months as this is mainly a one-woman operation. She brings the seaweed back to her greenhouse where it is hanged to dry. In as little as 24 hours, the now dry seaweed can be milled down to a size suitable for seasonings and soup add-ons, which Sarah sells on her website. Overall, this farm is doing truly groundbreaking work. While other seaweed aquaculture operations tend to focus on only the harvest of wild seaweed, Springtide is heavily involved in the continued development of every single stage of the seaweed life cycle. It is the largest organic seaweed farm in North America and is female owned and successfully run by just two individuals. Sarah and Springtide Seaweed are truly invested in giving back to the community and helping advance seaweed aquaculture. They're involved in the development of new nurseries in the area, educating the surrounding community, training up and coming seaweed farmers and sharing their expertise. Springtide Seaweed is an ever growing company continuing to develop with the constantly changing aquaculture sector. If you're looking to get your hands on some of their groundbreaking products, you can access them through their website at springtideseaweed.com. They are open to working with you for all of your seaweed needs and can be contacted through their website.